Broncos have went out and done it. They landed their possible franchise quarterback, drafting Bo Nix in the first round. There's no doubt about it, Bo Nix has been one of the most polarizing prospects through the draft process so far. You either love him or you hate him. So today I want to jump into the film and really analyze if Bo Nix can be the franchise quarterback for the Broncos and why him and Sean Payton might be the best pairing from this draft class. Jumping to this first play, I really want to highlight one of Bo Nix's best traits, and it's his effectiveness in the quick game. So pre-snap here, we see one of the most, one of the top concepts from the Oregon offense here, and it's the choice concept. All this is doing is pairing a front side quick game concept with this choice route to the backside. It's an easy read when the defense is sitting in too high here. All we're going to be reading is that Mike linebacker when he pushes out to the quick game concept, and in this case, it's the swing route here. It'll give leverage to the slot choice here to work his two-way go. And in this case, with that will linebacker fading back out into the boundary, he's going to snap it back across his face, making it an easy pitch and catch here, keeping the offense on schedule. All the play rolled from the top. Of course, this seems like an easy play, but it really isn't. It takes lots of reps here to be on the same page with your receivers. you got to be quick. you got to be decisive. you got to diagnose what the defense is giving you. And that's who Bo Nix is as a passer. So again, we're going to see on this next play here, we got the choice concept once again. Now we're just pairing it up with the spot concept here. We see that we got the two high defense, which is going to keep the read very simple for us. All we're going to do is read the mic. If he pushes out to the spot concept, we're going to have leverage once again. So the snap, we see him sprinting out to the flat. We see that space is vacated. Now that slot receiver circled in orange. He has his two-way go. He can either break out or break in. With that will fading back into the boundary once again, he'll snap it back across his face into that vacated space, getting another easy pitch and catch, keeping the offense on schedule. Like I said, all this play rolled from the top one more time. But again, as as the quarterback, you got to be quick. you got to be decisive. You can't hesitate. you got to get that ball out quick and be on the same page with your receiver. I keep harping on the choice concept. Why is it so important? Let's take a look back at one of Sean Payton's favorite concepts with Drew Brees back in the day here. And no shocker, it's the choice concept. We got spot choice here, reading that mic circled in orange. We see him at the snap of the ball. He's going to push out to the spot concept. We get our eyes back to the choice route here with the will position with inside leverage circled in blue here. This means that slot receiver is going to take his two-way go and break this outside now. Drew Brees doesn't hesitate, gets the ball out lightning quick here, pick him a nice easy catch to keep the offense on schedule. All the play roll again, we see the Mikey pushes out, the slot breaks inside due to that leverage of the will, and again, Drew Brees gets it out quick and on time to keep the offense on schedule. So we've seen Bo Nix execute this choice concept that Drew Brees dominated the league with back in the day. Let's flip gears here and let's take a look at this variation of stick here with this inside fade, this inside seam route here. We see the defense, they're not fully rotated into their cover three shell here. The post safety is hanging out on that boundary hash, leaving a massive vacated window for the little seam route here to get into picking up an explosive play for the offense. All the play roll from the top, but this is designed perfectly here. We see when they motion a three by one, the safeties rotate, the field safety rotates down, but the boundary safety doesn't ever get off that boundary hash. It's a busted coverage here, it's a failed assignment, and Bo Nix takes advantage of it. Once again, playing with that high level of confidence, that ability to read the defense pre and post snap at a high level. So here we go, this next play, we're taking a look at the same variation of stick here. Now because we got cover one, and again that safety's hanging on that boundary hash, we're going to have leverage to throw that inside fade once again, which Bo Nix throws a beautiful ball in the back corner of the end zone, picking up a big time touchdown for the offense. All the play roll from the top again, but again, this is just highlighting Bonix's ability to push the ball down the field, his ability to read the leverage pre-snap, and really punish defenses. So let me flash back again, and let's talk about why this concept is so important. We see Drew Brees in the Sean Payton era. Once again, they're running this variation of stick, and just like the last play with Bonix, we got cover one, we got great leverage for our inside fade here. So at the snap of the ball, the safety is late to get over the top. Drew Brees sees it, sets up, launches a beautiful ball down the sideline, picking up an explosive play for the offense here. All the play roll from the top one more time, but again, the key to these two concepts is being confident and being decisive when you do make your decision. And just like we see Drew Brees doing here, we saw Bo Nix do it. They are dominant at being those quick, decisive decision makers. And we see over a three-year span, Drew Brees and Sean Payton called these concepts over 131 times. So to have a quarterback that's already ran these concepts and knows them like the back of their hand, it's going to make the transition so smooth for this offense in year one. So there's no doubt about it. We see why the transition to Sean Payne's offense is going to be smooth. We see why Bo Nix is a decisive, confident decision maker. Let's flip gears and let's talk about that arm talent now and his ability to push the ball down the field. 
So pre-snap, we see the offense. They're in empty. The defense is all walked up here trying to show cover zero. Bo Nix knows he has to get the ball out early here and not take a sack. So the snap, the ball, he tries to peek at his quick game here, but he sees the defense. They pop two defenders to take away any of these quick in-breaking routes. This leaves a free rusher in Bo Nix's face, so he retreats to buy some time here, launches off his back foot, fading away from the throw, and still manages to throw a beautiful pass to the corner route, breaking down the sideline here. Once again, we see the defense. They pop those two defenders, trying to bait Bo Nix into a bad decision. But Nix doesn't panic, he retreats to buy time from the free rusher and shows off that arm talent throwing off the back foot for a big time first down. So looking at this next play here, we see the defense, they're lining up in cover one here pre-snap. We got a chance for an explosive play with our deep climb route here if he can beat his man defender. So at the snap of the ball here, we see immediately he gains leverage on this defender getting a 2-3 yard head start. We got a chance for a big time explosive play. But once we freeze the frame, we see that the defense has a rat defender undercutting this route, taking away that leverage we initially had pre-snap. But no worries here, Bo Nix flashes that ability to throw with great touch, layering that throw just over the top of that underneath rat defender, but not too much to put it out of the reach of his receiver. Let's flip it to the tight shot just to appreciate this throw even more. Take a look at it, just enough touch, just enough layering this throw to keep it out of the reach of the rat defender, but still just enough to put it on his receiver to pick up an explosive play for the offense. It's no secret that a lot of people like to criticize Bo Nix for his lack of vertical production, but we've seen in a play after play, he's able to layer the ball with touch and accuracy down the field. He's able to throw off his back foot and make these highlight reel throws, but it's all due to the system that he played in. He rarely had the opportunities to push the ball down the field, but you can't take that production or lack of production away from him because when he did have that small sample size of pushing the ball down the field, he was excellent at it. He didn't shy away from it. For example, right here, we see the running back. He's wide open the flats, but we also got the big time, more explosive, deep out route open. Bo Nix isn't going to shy away and just dump it off in the flats. He's going to throw off that back foot, fading away, throwing an accurate ball, pick him an explosive play. We see Bo Nix, he doesn't always have to throw on platform. He has the ability to get out of the pocket, extend the play, get off script, and throw off platform with those crazy arm angles. But of course you're not going to see those off script plays get littered all over his highlights like Caleb Williams. And that's because Bo Nix rarely gets off script. We've seen it today. Bo Nix is a rhythmic thrower. He's going to keep your offense on schedule, on pace. He's not going to try to do all this extra flashy stuff to make big mistakes. He's going to be excellent at doing what you ask of him and doing what the system requires. Again, Bo Nix has the arm talent to push the ball down the field. He has the athleticism to get off script and make explosive plays, but he doesn't make himself have to do that. He doesn't make his living off that because he's going to stay cool, calm, and collected and play on rhythm with his offense and keep them on schedule. And you can start to see why Sean Payton loves the pairing of Bo Nix. It's very eerily similar to Drew Brees, as we saw with some of those earlier concepts in the video. I think the transition from the Oregon offense to the Broncos offense will not be that big of a jump for Bo Nix, so I really do truly expect him to have one of the biggest and most impressive year ones out of the rookie quarterback class. But let me know your guys' thoughts down below. I love hearing from you guys. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.